talk to y'all a little bit today about the swarm cone swarm traps. These are, I call them like a paper mache and that's kind of how they feel to me. Um, they are recycled paper. These are a great trap in all actuality. You have a couple different ways in which you can mount these or you can be, uh, do some exploratory on your own and, and, and see what you can come up with. The cone in the bucket is shaped in such a manner that it, that it makes it a little tough to get mounted in any other way than horizontal or vertical. And the truth is that's probably the only two directions that you need them. Um, what they do have are brass rings embedded into the form and you can knock out the inside piece of, of paper that's still stuck in the grommet. You just knock it out. That provides you with a screw hole, a place to anchor this lid. If you can see on the display here in the store, we've got a, a, just merely a post with a 90 at top. Um, people have put these on low, low limbs that run out horizontally. You take screws, attach them here. The problem that I see with that and that most swarm trappers who do this a lot and utilize these cone traps is the removal. So you catch these bees in this and now you've got to take it down to shake the bees out into, into a hive body. Um, so in your premeditation, you want to fix these where it's easy for you to remove this entire cone trap with as little disturbance as possible. So recommendations might be a piece of plywood, uh, two by two square, put you two eye bolts in the back of it, and you can literally walk up to a tree and then use bungee cords or a ratchet strap and secure the plywood and then have your lid attached to it so that when you go to retrieve this full of bees, you take your cordless drill, you pull a couple screws and you've got this trap in your hand and now you can bring it down ground level and do your removal from the trap. Um, your, your options are vertical and horizontal that make the most sense. Let me explain a little bit about the interior of the lid. These ridges are actually put in here um, for starters. Uh, if you hang these traps vertically, these bees will honestly get here and attach the comb and start filling the comb down in the barrel. If you do this, th this is my particular method. If you do this, and you have now taken these bees down from a vertical position, and you've brought these bees down, getting them ready to install. When you pull this cap up, nine out of 10 times, they're all hanging below on the lid. So you've got the bees in the comb, which really makes that a whole lot simpler to get this comb removed, banded into frames and set in the box. The rest of the bees that are remaining, you turn up on the, the box and bang them in or lay this down in front. And if you transferred the queen, they're gonna march right in anyway. Um, horizontally, we'll bring you some different challenges. If, if you mount this trap in a horizontal position, which is perfectly fine. And, and I know guys who will take uh, a, a piece of old comb uh, hot glue it up here in the top. Um, the bees are going to, to hang from the above. So they're gonna build here. And when they do, I've seen these traps actually so full of comb where they've started building that they just encompass the entire diameter of this barrel. What you have at that point is a full blown cutout. Um, that's kind of gonna leave a bitter taste in your mouth because that now, when you pull this off, you've got all your bees are still in here locked on comb that you've got to get cleared, cut out, and put into frames. The goal of this trap is not only to catch bees in it and make it simple for you to remove them. 
here's the problem if you put this up and you ignore it for you know the, the the new immediately wears off oh i've checked it five days straight and hadn't even seen a bee around it you forget about it for a month and you go back and this thing is working alive with 30 40 pounds of honey and bees and comb you've got a job in front of you the goal is to be where you can kind of glance at this on the way in from work uh on the way to work however your time is managed but it really needs to be looked at every day so that when you recognize you have a catch and that may be bees bearded out on the front that may be bees going in and out bees taking in pollen's a pretty good sign to watch for um, when that activity increases going and coming and you have numbers of bees working this trap it's time to, to suit up and take a look and see what you got these come out the bees come out of these best within 24 to 48 hours um, so with that in mind, let me show you now how to bait this. I mentioned to you that if you use the horizontal method, you could use a little comb. Um, and that's absolutely a great idea. That comb is always an extra attractant. In fact, it's as solid as attracted as it can be. It just doesn't have the long range pull that these other attractants do. You'll see me bait a 10 frame hive body as well. It's the same method. So you've got a small baggie. You've got two, two attractants. One is that I'm using for an internal is just an essential lemongrass oil you add it to the cotton ball you you just need that cotton ball to absorb about half so a, a good goodly amount dollop inside on the on the cotton ball seal the bag don't rupture the bag just seal it you can now take a push pin plastic push pin thumbtack anything that you want okay let's say you're going to do this vertically i take and i tack that baggie on the inside rim somewhere out of the way so right over here would be a great spot you're if you're targeting them to build comb on the lid you can you can melt wax on this to give them starter strips like it was a foundationless frame um, but in reality um, i've put these up with nothing but the bait and the lure bees get in there and they know what to do they they'll represent with this they'll they'll orientate to that and start pulling comb so with that now tacked inside the barrel and you hang this whatever your method is a board on the limb this screwed to the limb where you can get to it you want to secure the lid to the trap so there again you've got these grommets on the side knock the paper out of them uh, a sheetrock screw, those real sharp black small sheetrock screws screwed into those holes. Hold your lid secure. You're not worrying about the wind or the weight dropping this barrel from the lid. Um, try to get these in something substantial enough that the wind doesn't move them constantly. Um, now that you've got all that done, you've got your lemongrass placed inside. You've already figured out how you want to mount it then comes the swarm commander this is your wind drift lure this is going to get a, this spray pheromone out into the wind and as those bees hit that they're going to turn they're going to come back to it to investigate so a good spray right on the the rim of the hole just a good good pump saturating spray right there do that about every two weeks as long as you're not making a catch use this externally your lemongrass is working for you it's going to emit through the through the baggie it's going to draw bees to it um, on the horizontal side if you go this direction you may want to set this in your deer stand where it's going to be level here in the in the seat or on the platform put you a a piece of two before under it just to make this chamber as level as you can get it um, in that like i said you might want to put 
a piece of starter strip with wax on it. You might wanna hot glue a piece of comb on it to get them attracted to it. Same deal, now you're gonna put your, your, your lemongrass can go in exactly the same position. Your spray's out here. It's the same thing, it's just vertical, horizontal. It's up to you. Um, you know, this way, if, if you ignore this a little bit too long, the more you're gonna have to deal with when you take it down. Um, these work great. They are a great swarm catching trap. Um, success with them myself. Sell them quite regularly. A lot of the customers love them. They catch bees in them. And when, when something's working, uh, hey, you know, don't fight it. Thanks for watching.